For having such a prolific career lasting almost half a century, horror and sci-fi author Richard Matheson isn't talked about nearly as much as he should be. He wrote Steven Spielberg's first movie, Duel. Many of the Twilight Zone episodes, such as Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, he wrote I Am Legend, which was adapted to film three times and was the inspiration for the first zombie movie. And he also wrote tonight's film, Burn Witch Burn from 1962, also known as Night of the Eagle. Is it any good? Well, let's find out together. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. Richard Matheson is one of my favorite horror authors of all time, and I love when his adaptations get to the screen. So when I was first made aware of Burn Witch Burn, you knew I had to see it. The script for Burn Witch Burn was adapted from a novel by Fritz Leiber known as Conjure Wife, and it's not the first film to use the novel as inspiration. Weird Woman was released in 1944, and it starred Lon Chaney Jr. And even though Weird Woman and Burn Witch Burn were adapted from the same source material, Burn Witch Burn is often regarded as the superior film. The film starts with Professor Norman Taylor, who denounces superstition and witchcraft at his psychology lecture. His female student is enamored by him, but his fellow co-workers don't like him. They hate how he is relatively new to teaching, but is already up for promotion before all of them. Norman goes home to see his wife and they invite all of Norman's co-workers over to play cards. At the end of the night, after everyone has gone home, Norman's wife Tansy is looking for something. She finds some sort of lock of hair in the lampshade and then she burns it. Upstairs, Norman finds a dead spider in a jar. He confronts his wife about the dead spider and she lies to cover the truth. Turns out that she collects talismans and claims that she is a witch. She's only new to the craft, but all of the trinkets in the house are used to protect Norman. She claims that people are out there to get him. He is not a believer in such things, so he orders her to burn them all. Well, that might have been a bad decision because the very next day at school, everything goes wrong. Norman almost gets hit by a bus. The girl in Norman's class claims that he raped her. Norman's life begins to spiral as Tansy goes to her secret cabin to try to make things right again with witchcraft. Now, I don't want to spoil the ending or anything farther in the story, but I do want to say that there is a pretty awesome giant eagle scene and the effects are surprisingly great for the time, even if you can see the rope attached to the bird. With all things considered, Burn Witch Burn is a pretty fantastic horror film for 1962. The atmosphere, tension, and sharp cinematography are all top notch. I seriously love how this film looks. Some shots are top tier filmmaking, and the restoration by Kino Lorber really helps present the film in the best possible way. The film just looks fantastic. The score is surprisingly on point as well. It knows when to be whimsical and it knows when to be boisterous. As I stated earlier, the film is also known as Night of the Eagle. It's a UK film and Night of the Eagle is its original title. The American distribution rights were bought up by American International Pictures, which had Roger Corman at the helm. You know Roger, so the film needed a gimmick of sorts, something to engage the audience. It was his idea to create the opening narration in the Burn Witch Burn version. The opening narration speaks to the audience of how there's awful witchcraft in the film and that the film is cursed. The only way to watch the movie and to be safe through the movie is by saying a magic spell which the narrator uses on the audience. It's gimmicky and it doesn't fit with the tone of the actual film. Speaking of Roger Corman, Richard Matheson and Corman worked together many times. Corman has even stated that Matheson was his favorite writer to work with and that he always used his first draft. Burn Witch Burn is a serious film and my favorite part is that you don't need to believe in witchcraft for the movie to be explained. It's up to the viewer's interpretation. It could all be explained rationally or there could be witchcraft involved. It's up to you. It's very similar to 1957's Night of the Demon, which is a personal favorite of mine. Night of the Demon is a better film, but Burn Witch Burn isn't a bad alternative. So if you ever get the chance to watch Burn Witch Burn, do yourself a favor and check it out. Even if you think the story is a little slow, the cinematography will leave you speechless. And that's all I have for tonight. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe. 
Take care, everyone.